this fellow this morning, he said um, he has a uh, somebody who's has got Alzheimer's, and he wants to know how he can help this oh, one. Oh, interesting. And. He said, well, get into the witness with him. Mm. Witness the, the, mm. the Alzheimer's and witness your behavior. And then gets us the... What is Alzheimer's? I mean, what do you think it is from, from, from a, a spiritual perspective? <clears throat> I have no idea what it is from a spiritual perspective, but I think the advice you gave is spot on because yeah. with anybody who is in <clears throat> distress or suffering, particularly from a chronic disease, yeah. I think ultimately all you can give is your pure loving presence. Yeah, yeah. And, but, now the interesting thing from the social neuroscience point of view is we see that that's not just a nice thing you're doing. It's an interpersonally, biologically active thing that you're doing because their mirror neurons are attuning to you and tuning them into that range of a calm, clear, loving presence. So you're mediating in their biological state by your state of being. Yes. That's the gift you're bringing to them. Yeah. Is you're slowing their heart rate. You're doing all of the, all of the things that you do in your body. Yeah, are going to be picked up and reflected in their body. So if you can be in a state which is a, you know, not an anxious state, not a fearful state, yeah. I've very present said state. For the, when the dying person, when you sit by a dying person, uh, be a loving rock. Exactly. And that's. And that, that gives them a, a loving heart. Yeah. And that gives them the feeling of love, of, of being loved and being in, lo in a state yeah. of love. Just as loving states are passed back and forth, so are toxic states. If the doctor comes in in a very efficient kind of I-it mode, yeah. that you're a diagnosis, you're not a person in pain, then there's a kind of a distance and an indifference. And it turns out that the brain reacts to the such a social rejection, being treated as an it rather than a you, uh, by activating this exact zone that registers physical pain, that it's hurtful wow. in a neurological sense. Wow. So it, it's not just that it's nice to have a loving presence like in a hospital. Yeah. I think it should be required. Yeah. Yeah. Because. Otherwise, people are needlessly suffering. What's happening is that emotional distress is being added to their actual physical pain. And, you know, Aldous Huxley in the book said, institutions are organized lovelessness. <laughs> lovelessness. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I, I've, I, boy, I, 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 I'm, 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 I'm with him. <laughs> But I think now that we're understanding that that brains connect kind of in the subliminal way and that emotions, there's a subterranean emotional economy as part of every interaction, no matter what else is going on, people are passing emotions back and forth. That we need to be more responsible. There's a new level of social responsibility, yeah, which yeah. is how am I impacting the people that I interact with all through the day? Yes. And if you're in the caring profession, you know, it should be part of what you're conscious of in yep, yep. in your interactions, not yep. just like something you can do or not do, depending on how you feel. I mean, it requires a, a kind of emotional labor and consciousness, which adds to the kind of maybe the load of people, too. Maybe some people would feel that as a burden. But I think if they work on themselves and are trying themselves to become calm, clear, and kind, as human beings, that, that it would happen kind of naturally along with whatever else they do. That they would be that loving rock for people. <laughs>